Okay, thank you very much for inviting me to join this Persecucha. It's my first time here, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'm a documentary photographer based in Bangkok. Yeah, and um, my passion in photography started from traveling, and now I have shifted my focus to document photography, especially about the minority and endangered culture. So as I told you, traveling and photography are things that I really love and it has taken me to many places around the world. And one of the places that I like most and I want to share with you today is Kurdistan. Yeah. But where is it exactly on the map? Well, you can never find it because it's not a country. Yeah. And um, Kurdistan is a geocultural region across Iran, Iraq, Turkey and Syria. And in 2018, I visited Kurdistan for the first time and I fell in love with it immediately. So I began exploring various parts of Kurdistan. Yeah. Because many areas in Kurdistan lies in the high mountains and stepped house like this can be found in many villages. It's so amazing, like here in Dolao, in Iran, is a great example of how people integrate their lives and architecture to the landscape. Yeah. And uh, in many villages, people still live in a traditional way and traditional costumes are part of their daily life. Yeah. Such as in this photo, which was taken in Horaman Valley in Iran, the old men are wearing traditional jackets, which can be found only in this village. And Kurdish people, they have old traditions that date back to ancient times in this photo, the old man is preparing a special soup for villagers at Pia Shalya festival. And the recipe is passed down in his family for generations. The majority of the Kurds, they are Sunni Muslims, but they also practice other ancient religions too. Like here in this photo, a group of Dervish Kurds, they are entering the trance why they are performing a ritualistic dance to reach the God. And here we are going inside the, the house of a Kurdish family. The lady is preparing a special bread, which is made only once a year for this festival, Piyashalya. And the bread is made of local ingredients and uh, it's sprinkled with like ground walnuts, which is the main produce in Horaman Valley. And local people believe that eating this bread will bring you good luck. So when I was there, I ate lots of it, yeah. So on my first trip in Kurdistan, my impression was that the region seemed like a far away land with beautiful nature, but behind the serene landscape and the friendly smiles that I met, I also found stories of loss, of grief, sufferings, and violent oppressions by the central government of the each country yeah for example in march 1988 the iraqi government under saddam hussein they carry out chemical attack at a village of halabja in iraq and it was part of a systematic ethnic cleansing against the kurds around 5000 people were killed and 7000 people were injured and the violent oppression made the Kurds stand up and fight back and struggle for their rights, autonomy, or even independence. And this result in ongoing conflicts between Kurdish separatist groups and central government for many decades. But as you know, those who suffer the most, they are always civilians like us. For example, in Chernak, Turkey in 2015, there were violent clashes between Turkish military forces and the Kurdish separatist group, which is called PKK. And 2000 buildings were destroyed, leaving people homeless and ruins can still be seen until today. And because of the ongoing conflict in the Middle East, many Kurdish families, they had to flee from home and they seek asylum in Western countries. But despite all this, the Kurds still show resilience and stand up for each other. Here is a celebration of the Nowruz, the Kurdish New Year in Diyarbakir, Turkey. The Turkish government, they once banned this celebration as well as expression of 
Kurdish culture and identity. In the past decades, central governments, they have been trying to assimilate Kurdish culture. And once there was even a ban of speaking Kurdish language in the public, and until today, it's not allowed to teach Kurdish language at school in Iran and Turkey. But that even made the Kurds stick closer together and form the Kurdish solidarity. There's a place where Kurdish men will come to meet every day, a tea house, which you can find in every neighborhood. It's an important public space for Kurdish men and secondly to the mosque. Yeah. And mountains are important and symbolic features of Kurdistan, which is a landlocked region. Many people still rely on small scale agriculture. Like here is the worker in the village in Iran getting ready for his work up in the mountains. The Kurds have a long history of fights and struggles for their rights and autonomy. Many lost their friends and family members, and some of them have to flee their home country. There is a famous Kurdish proverb that the Kurds, they have no friends, but the mountains. And the high mountains also divide the Kurds into small tribes and clans, which have their own culture and language. But what unites more than 20 millions of Kurds around the world together? It's their Kurdish identity, which they are really proud of. So the more I travel in Kurdistan, the more fascinating stories I found on the way, especially about that culture, which is hardly mentioned in international media. So my journey in Kurdistan as a storyteller has actually just begun. And um, there are many more mountains I have to cross, many roads I have to take, especially off the beaten path, yeah. So thank you for letting me sharing the stories about my journey in Kurdistan, and I hope you enjoyed it. Wow, that was another fantastic presentation about it.